Hello and welcome to a new series of video about control systems. Again control systems? Yeah, in this series of video we want to discuss if it's if we shall build a pragmatic control system, a hydraulic control system, an electrical control system, an electronic control system and so on. Yeah, we talked about those stuff. Yeah? And now we want to find out what is good. Yeah? What would be nice? Yeah? So, what is a control system? Well, every control system uh, consists of several parts. We have talked about this. Yeah? So, there's the energy supply part. Yeah? One part absolutely necessary. All right? Now make it through energy supply. Then we said we said we need something signal input. We need to read something from our outside world to read in the current state of the thing we want to operate. Uh, we want to control. Uh, then we need signal processing. We've read in our information, now we need to process the information. Signal processing. All right. Signal processing. Then we do have a result. Uh, what should happen? Uh, and we have a signal output. And at the top, we do have some working elements which do really a job. This is the top of our control system, usually drawn in the top, let's call it. This is the part the control system consists of. Consists of. Energy supply, signal input, signal processing, signal output, working element is doing something Leading the new input, processing, output, doing something, leading the new input, pack, 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 step by step, maybe, or something like this. Yeah. And we said we can realize all those control systems with different, with different techniques. Okay. One of those techniques, I'm already looking for a pen here. Uh, I wanted to use. I wonder where they disappear. Take this one. One of these possibilities is fluid technique. Yeah? So maybe pneumatic or hydraulic. Yeah? And one is electric electronic. Okay. This would be two ways. Yeah. What is the energy supply of a pneumatic system? Yeah. There might be some sort of motor with a coupling. There might be a pump or something like this. Yeah. Compressor, pump, yeah, depending on pneumatic or hydraulic system. Then we might have some storage, yeah, pressure storage, so on. Energy supply. Yeah. Energy supply of electric or electronic components is usually a power plant, a battery, something like this. Yeah. Signal input. What would be the signal input of a pneumatic or hydraulic? 
This usually is some sort of valve, a way valve, yeah, with a special form of operation, maybe a roll. Yeah. Maybe something like this. Yeah. Two, three way valve. Roll operated. Okay. Signal processing. Typical signal processing element in the hydraulic or pneumatic department is also the way valve. Yeah. I will also draw here a way valve. Yeah. Maybe this now is operated by pressure. Yeah because of some inputs, shifting left and right. Signal input on the electric, electronic side is of course a switch, yeah, for instance, yeah, or a switch operated by lever or something like this, limit switch, something like this. Yeah. Signal processing, now I'm using the right color, Signal processing of electric or electronic components is, of course, a relay. So this is operated by some voltage and is switching some contacts. Relay, typical processing element. Or in electronic, it might not be a relay, it might be SPS. Or... SPS is German, Speicherprogramm in German, PLC is the correct term in English, Programmable Logic Controller. Huh? Would be electronic version. Signal output, here in Promatic, this is also usually a wave valve, but a big one. Huh? A big wave valve, which can, and now I'm drawing a 4-2 wave valve. Huh? which can be usually also operated by some pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Signal output. This signal output is then driving the working element. In electric, electronic things, the signal output is usually a contactor. So basically a relay with quite some Power, big relay, yeah, contactor relay, depending on the on the size of the thing. Yeah? Now the working element, working usual, very usual working element in pneumatic and hydraulic is a cylinder. And here we usually have a motor, yeah? one phase three-phase motor, something like this. So these are, these are the things. And we, we have discussed this. There are a lot of advantages on pneumatic and hydraulic side on the working elements. You know, overload safe, start up with the highest possible power, maintenance, easy to maintain, light white and so on we had several advantages which are in the working element area so pneumatic and hydraulic in working element area is pretty pretty nice because there are so many advantages a motor an electric motor always needs some speed to have power and so on yeah this is not this is not the same of course there are ways where electric motor is easier yeah but not for every every application there are a lot of applications out there where the working element the benefits of a pneumatic and hydraulic working element is overwhelming okay energy supply in pneumatic and hydraulic is usually in-house yeah? so we need to have this uh, compressor yeah? we need to have this hydraulic pump somewhere in-house, not too far away, because we cannot travel very far away with our lines. 
simply because then we are losing too much energy. This is not an issue for electric or electronic things. Yeah? There are power lines everywhere. We can transfer power over kilometers so we can uh, take the power from somewhere else, from the power plant, for instance. Yeah? And now let's come to the signal input. This is one. This is one hydraulic signal input. Okay. Roller valve. This is an electric signal input. Yeah. Maybe this is not a fair comparison because this is really tiny and this is really huge. Then make it like this. Yeah. Now it's pretty fair comparison. Yeah. This is also also already pretty big switch. Okay. Here I need to to put on some hoses at least, yeah, or tubes, and, and here it's just a cable. Yeah. Can be rather tiny. Input element. I mean huh? processing element. This is <sighs> pneumatic processing elements. A lot of of uh, valves there on, yeah. And one valve might be. This is an electric. Yeah? So this is the this is the this is the uh, coil there. Yeah. This is a relay. This relay and this valve they pretty much fit. Yeah? However, you see the connectors here. Back, yeah. I need to go in with hoses here, and here it's a cable, maybe as thin as this. Yeah? I can bend it back. I can even go around corners. Okay. Signal output. Well, it's like that, but bigger. Yeah. And also the the contactors are really big. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of size, you see electric, electronic components <sighs> up to here, they win. Yeah? And also they win in terms of, of, of energy, energy consumption. Yeah? So, yeah. If I want to use a pneumatic or hydraulic working element, I have to use a pneumatic or hydraulic signal output. Okay? And I want to benefit from the low power abilities and from the, op or from the sheer size of the elements of an electric. Yeah? This is why a huge amount of, of control system do work as pneumatic, hydraulic, and electric control system, where this part is pneumatic, hydraulic. Yeah? Here we have some sort of link, yeah? and this part is then electric or electronic. Yeah? This is very usual. Yeah? Here we have also the pass. Very usual is this combination. And this is what we are going to talk about yeah, in this series of video. Electropromatic or elect electrohydraulic. Yeah. I will not make any difference because now you should know the difference between pneumatic and hydraulic. Yeah, and the elements and so on, they are equal. Yeah. So we only have to find a way how to get information from here to here, yeah? maybe pressure information, something like this, and how to get information from here to here. Yeah? This is the task. Yeah? And then we have the benefits from both worlds. Yeah? Energy saving, small amount of, of uh, space required, yeah? really powerful, really accurate, and, and, and really light white for that amount of power. Okay. Yeah. This is electroplomatic, electrohydraulic. 
how we can transfer information uh, between those elements will be the topic of the next video. Okay, next video we are discussing how we can influence with our electric circuits something here. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.